On one corner, we have one of the most powerful Android smartphones of the year, and in the other, we have Apple's best iPhone ever, or so they say. Which of these devices is better suited for your needs? Let's find out. I'm Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is iPhone 5S versus LG G2. This comparison is odd in its own way since LG is better known for their intense competition with Samsung and not Apple. These devices are completely different in absolutely everything, and still, both sport the best cameras in their respective platforms, the best internals, and both even push the bar of design in their own unique way. When it comes to hardware, the only thing they have in common is that both companies are trying to give you the thinnest and lightest design you can get for the experience they intend to give you. The G2 is in no way like last year's Optimus G. Some are disappointed at the company for ditching the glass on glass for plastic, but there's a reason for that. Just picture this. At 5.2 inches diagonal, this phone has almost the exact same screen size as the monstrous first generation Galaxy Note, but sandwiched in a chassis that's almost identical to the Galaxy S4. Yes, this phone is that big and yet it is that small. There's almost no bezel here, and if LG had to use plastic to pull this off, I'm gonna forgive them. And especially because there is some heft to the phone, so it doesn't really feel cheap in the hand. Yes, the buttons are awkward placed in the back, but I've gotten used to it, and if you don't like it, simply double tap the display and the device will wake up or go back to standby. Still, the device is a smudge magnet, even though the denim pattern that LG has chosen in the back looks kinda cool. Now, aside from design, the real story here is the spec sheet, and this is one of the first devices to rock the Snapdragon 800 processor from Qualcomm, clocked at 2.2 GHz along with 2 GB of RAM and all the other 2013 bells and whistles like an IR blaster and Wi-Fi 802.11ac. Sadly, our AT&T unit here features only 16 or 32 gigabytes of non-expandable storage and a 3000 mAh battery that is non-replaceable, uh, which you can actually get with some unlocked models of this phone, but we'll explain later on on the test notes why this is not really important. The iPhone is another device that challenges design. I mean, when was the last time that you got a 4-inch display in such a small and elegant housing? Apple's focus is to give you the best one-handed experience, and they nail it here. The design of this phone includes the usual convention button layout, but obviously all sandwiched in a premium aluminum design overall. The device feels great in the hand, and any of the three color options that you choose will deter fingerprints quite well. Now, specs on the iPhone won't ever sound monstrous when compared to any Android phone, but Apple's A7 64-bit processor is both powerful and efficient. We do have fixed storage options and a non-replaceable battery. That's the reality of every iPhone that you buy, but it's also the reality of this G2 in particular. Though we would like to have an IR blaster and Wi-Fi AC on this phone as well, and the enhancements that are lacked by the G2 are Touch ID, which is actually quite cool. Both these devices sport IPS displays, and as such, they are just gorgeous. Great color reproduction, great pixel density, and great viewing angles, though obviously the G2 does abide to a much better 1080p standard and much better pixel density as well. Overall, on paper and in the hand, these two devices live up to their top position in their respective platforms, and both are future-proof devices in their own way, since the platform is really what determines that. It really depends on you and if you'd prefer a larger-than-life display that suits your needs or if one-handed and premium feel is more important to you when it comes to hardware. Now, I'll admit I didn't want to get to the software section of this video, and sadly the time has come. Okay, so Apple's iOS 7 has definitely matured for good, and it is now more visually pleasing. And even though it's not out there to wow you, instead it's actually there to blend with your needs. Surely customizations are limited, but you won't need them for the most part. This is a very efficient piece of software that just works and that is logical in almost every aspect. Enhancements like Control Center or the Smarter Photo Gallery will make any iOS user happy, so I'm sure that a lot of people will be pleased, but sadly, software is not LG's best work. This device does run Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean out of the box, which is great, but LG's custom skin is, in a word, tacky. It is very poorly designed almost everywhere, and it does bog down the phone at times, even with the Snapdragon 800. 
The text and folders overlaps and you'll even find spelling mistakes across various areas of the UI which make everything look sloppy. Some areas try to be like TouchWiz, like the case of the tab settings and even the whole camera UI is a poor ripoff of the Galaxy S4. Sadly, multi-window didn't get copied from Samsung, which is the only thing I would have praised here, but LG does bring cute slide apps which are sloppy looking, but still they bring a windowed interface to certain services, which is actually really cool. Now, okay, I'm gonna stop criticizing the G2 because to LG's defense, they chose Android as their operating system, so you don't really have to put up with any of this. All you have to do is do what I did, just install Nova Launcher, which I found to be the best third-party launcher that works with it, and install SwiftKey, and then you can start enjoying this phone. You'll even notice that Nova runs much smoother on this G2 than pretty much LG's own software UI. Overall, even though Apple doesn't allow customizations, those who have an iPhone know that you just won't need them. So software on iOS 7 could be considered solid. LG may have failed here, but since it runs Android, you'll notice that you can customize just about everything you want on the phone, so the experience can be awesome depending on you. Now, how is it to actually use these two phones on a daily basis? Well, I'll admit I love them both. Performance is really the specialty of both phones. Every single app launches quickly on both of them and they are very reliable. They don't even have significant heat issues when you're playing hardcore games that are optimized for them. At first, my tests were kind of difficult with the G2 because Asphalt 8 wasn't optimized for the Snapdragon 800, but lucky G2 that just got updated today. So I did get to play the game and it played quite great on this device, but so does the iPhone 5S. Now, Touch ID, while awesome on the iPhone 5S, is not available on the G2, but that really depends on your needs, whether that's cool or not. See, I have a lot of passwords. I depend on them, so I definitely need something like Touch ID, and the fact that it works in seconds and it works flawlessly makes me love this feature a lot, but a lot of people don't need passwords, so that could just mean that you don't need this. And on Android, you have options like Face to Unlock, even though they're not as quick as Touch ID, I'll tell you that. Now in battery life, things are dramatically different between these two devices. The Snapdragon 800 on the LG G2 zips on that battery with a straw. You just can't kill this phone. I've gotten two solid days of use with no mercy to this device and it takes it like a champ. If gaming is your thing, this is really the perfect device. You get a big display, a smooth processor, and a battery that just won't die. On the other hand, the iPhone has good battery life that'll last you through the day, but just one day. That's fine for most users, but the G2 really takes the cake here. When it comes to their cameras, guys, the G2 has the Android camera to beat. The optical image stabilization makes those 13 megapixel shots great on both sunlight and low light. Forget about the shooting modes here, just set this device to auto and let the phone do the rest. Yes, the camera is that good. Now again, that's comparing the G2 against other Android phones. The 5S on the other hand is no slouch. The camera does not have optical image stabilization, but the software stabilization provided by Apple is actually state of the art. There are some low light photos that I did find better on the iPhone, but not significantly better. I would feel that both cameras perform just as great on both devices. Phone calls are good on both devices as well. The iPhone did sound a little better over the earpiece for me, but callers said that I sounded exactly the same on both devices on the other end, so I would call this even for both. Now, the iPhone has a speaker that's second only to HTC's boom sound for speaker phone calls and for music. Sadly, the G2 has a very bad speaker. It's very tinny, and it's just a feature that I would not recommend you use on this phone. So, bottom line iPhone 5S or LG G2. I'll try to make this easy for you. I'd rather you select the platform that you prefer, whether it's iOS or Android. I mean, in my case, in the past I would select iOS because the iPhone took better photos and it had a more reliable experience. But when you use the G2, you'll notice that you get a great camera and that the user experience is very reliable as long as you install a third-party launcher. So let's just say that you have two very solid performers you can pick from either of the platforms that you want. I'd call the G2 a gamer's best friend, or for anybody that's interested in heavy multimedia use. 
There is definitely no compromise here, and if you'd prefer to stay on the Android ecosystem, this is your best choice, obviously, if you don't mind the big package. And on the other hand, I'd call the iPhone everybody's best friend, since it can handle games, it can handle multimedia with ease. There is no compromise on your experience with iOS here, and you don't have to have a monster phone in order to get this experience, which is sadly the problem with Android for most people. Regardless of what you pick, I am sure you're going to be a happy customer with either of these two phones. That's it for today's comparison. Thank you very much for watching. Please let us know in the comments down below which device are you picking or did you pick? Did you get the LG G2 or the iPhone 5S? You can also leave us a comment if you have any particular question about these phones as well. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera. Again, thank you very much for watching. I'm Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw and we will see you tomorrow for more coverage.